हेलो वेलकम बैक सुशील दिस साइड एंड दिस इज कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ 50 डेज सीक्वल क्वेरी चैलेंजेस सो थैंक्स फॉर योर सपोर्ट इन द फर्स्ट वीडियो आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट टू यू ऑल कैन यू प्लीज आल्सो सपोर्ट इन दिस वीडियो एज वेल सो प्लीज लाइक दिस वीडियो डू सब्सक्राइब अवर चैनल एंड शेयर टू अदर्स इट विल ऑलवेज मोटिवेट मी टू रिकॉर्ड मोर एंड मोर वीडियोज सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद टू डेज वीडियो सो दिस इज डे टू ऑफ फिफ्टी डेज सीक्वल क्वेरी चैलेंजेस सो हियर we can see we have one of the input data and this table is having total four columns first is the machine id second is the process id third is the activity type and fourth is the time stamp in the output we just want to have only two columns first will be your machine id and second will be your average processing time so the question is can you please write a query and for getting average processing time from input table that you can see here so for getting the average processing time first here we can analyze about this table so it is having the machine id and let's focus on machine id 0 so in machine id 0 this machine was started twice here the start and end along with the process id is indicating how many times this machine is started so process id 0 is indicating it was started the first time process id 1 is indicating it is starting in second time here we can see the start time and end time so we can simply do the subtract between end time to start time and then we can take the average on the machine id for getting this output so you can pause this video and you can think how we can write the sql query and what will be the logic that we can apply for getting this output so let's start so here first what we can do we can create two columns on the basis of this activity type first column will be your start time and second column will be your end time so the start time we can simply check if the activity type is the start then what about the time stamp for those will be your start time in the end time if the activity type is end then what about the time stamp value that will be your end talk end time so these two columns we can create and after that we can take the max on this start time and end time those two columns that we have created on the basis of machine id and the process id and then after we can simply do the subtract with end time to start time because end time and start time will be coming in a single line so we can do the subtract and then we can take the errors so let's jump to sql server management studio where we will write the query for getting this output so here i have written this script for saving our time so let's try to execute this query so here table has created and it is also having the data so we can verify so we can write the select statement with this fact machine table so let me execute this select statement and it is having the same data that we have seen in the slide now next what we can do we can simply create two columns that we were talking about so how we can create we can simply use the case statement so for using the case statement we can simply write the case when your activity type if your activity type is start so we can simply write start if the activity type is start then what are the time stamp value that will be your start time so we can simply call this as start time we can do the same thing for the end time so we can copy this case statement and here this could be your end time and here in the activity type that could be end so if the activity type is end then whatever the time available in the time stamp that will go in the end time so here we can also verify the same so here we can see the activity type which is start so time stamp whatever the time stamp is available that is coming as start time here the activity type is end so here it is coming under the end time next what we can do we can simply take the max on the basis of the machine id and the process id so by using these two columns we can simply take the max of the start time and end time so it will be coming in a single row so when the machine was started when the machine was end will be coming a single row so here we can simply write the machine id in the select statement along with the process id and in the group by we can also do the group by on these two columns only so let me try to execute for checking the output okay so it is saying like you have specified these two columns in the group by 
but you have not used the aggregate function max yet on these two columns so let me try to use the max function in these two columns that we have created for the start time and end time now let me try to execute and we'll see the output so here we can see we are having the same output in a single row for the start time and end time now let me put this into one of the ct so for that we can simply use with ct name as and then whatever the query is there now here we can do your select statement this ct and here we can also see we can simply take the difference in start time with the end time so whatever the difference is there first column in the output we want a machine id the second column we want to take the average so how we can get we can simply do the end time minus start time so whatever the difference that we are getting we can simply take the average of the difference that we are getting so this will be your average processing time and here we can simply use the group by on this machine id so we can simply use the machine id here let me try to execute this query so it should be going to get the same output that we are expecting so i hope guys you have understood how we can achieve this output so thank you so much for watching this video please like this video subscribe our channel see you in the next video with another very interesting interview question